pink dot the color associated with the sweetness, softness, and romance may not be a color at all. Or at least according to some scientists who say that pink is not a real wavelength of light, what we see is the product of our wishful brains blending red and violet wavelengths together. Try telling that to my little pony. Nonetheless, we say leave pink alone. And in fact, let's celebrate it. There's no better time to honor the prettiest color that may or may not exist than during February, the month of all things rosy-hued. So we've gathered up some of the planet's more curious critters that come in various shades of magenta, fuschia, coral and rose to pitch some woo. First in the lineup, pictured above, is the most charming salamander in all of salamander world, axolotl, ambistoma mexicanum, also known as the Mexican walking fish. Not only are these amphibians just ridiculously cute, but they never undergo metamorphosis and thus stay in larval form their entire lives. Plus, they have super healing powers that allow them to do things like regenerate limbs. Rock on, axolotl. A rare albino dolphin that can go from white to pink when it is feeling flushed is pulling in the crowds at a water park in Japan. Although bottlenose dolphins, terciops, are usually gray, this extremely rare creature is an albino and has no coloration, apart from a tendency to turn pink when feeling flushed. Photos show how the animal is normally white, and occasionally pink when swimming along regular colored gray dolphins. Albino mammals are born without melanin, which gives the color to both eyes and skin, and albino dolphins are extremely rare. In fact this specimen is believed to be only the second one ever put on display in an aquarium after it was purchased from fishermen. And they may well have been doing the animal a favor, as albinos are easy prey out at sea as they lack the coloration to blend in like their gray-colored relatives. Experts said that it was remarkable that the animal had actually lived so long before ending up at the G-Whale Museum, in Higashimuro district in southern Japan's Wakayama prefecture. Controversially, the creature was captured during the annual dolphin hunt in the town of G. The town and the hunt was made notorious by the 2009 Oscar-winning documentary The Cove, which shows fishermen herding dolphins into a cove either to be captured for aquariums or killed for meat. It was reported that 1,218 dolphins and small whales were captured there in 2011 though it did not specify how many of those captured were killed. But the rare albino was one that did survive. Since then it has become the subject of a detailed study by the Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology and the Institute of Cetacean Research who recently published a paper on the fascinating creature. First described in 1874, Pink katydids have inspired more than a century of discussion over the hows and whys of their incredible hue. At the turn of the 20th century, Harvard entomologist Hubbard Scudder suggested that the pink coloring could be seasonal, that green insects change their colors with the autumn leaves for protection. But having found bright pink katydid nymphs in the prairies of Wisconsin and Illinois during July in 1907, American entomologist and mimicologist, William Morton Wheeler, rejected this theory, suggesting instead that the condition was genetic. For the first time, pink katydids were recognized as genetic mutants in the scientific literature, and Wheeler compared the condition to albinism. Entomologists now believe they've confirmed that Wheeler was right. Whatever the reason, we're happy that there are such things as pink katydids in the world. Look at that beauty. Named after the terrestrial flower that is equally showy, the sea anemone comes in a rainbow of dazzling colors, pink being among the loveliest. But this creature that's related to coral and jellyfish is more than just a pretty flowery glob. The anemone has some surprising traits, they are carnivorous, they can live to be 50 years old, and some of them can reach a whopping 6 feet in size. While flamingos may be the poster children for pink animals, we couldn't pass up the beautifully quirky roseate spoonbill, a gorgeous pink wading bird with a charming spatulate bill. Sadly for these guys, their pink primary feathers were highly prized for use in ladies' fans in the late 19th century. By the 1930s, 
the once healthy Florida population had dipped to a total of only 30 to 40 breeding pairs. Fortunately for the Rossi 8 Spoonbill and all of us admirers, full legal protection against hunting was enacted and there are now over 1,000 nesting pairs in Florida. Well hello there, Tritoniopsis elegans, otherwise known as a species of dendronated nudi branch. If you're scratching your head, we understand. The nudi branch, which comes from the Latin for naked gills, is a marine gastropod mollusk that is often confused with sea slugs. Of all the wildly wonderful traits that these creatures possess, their color is perhaps the most remarkable. Ranging in a spectrum from soft and candy color to neon rainbow, they have evolved these hues for means of both camouflage, when matching their environment, and warning, as is seen in the brightly contrasting combinations that say, hey, look at me. I'm poisonous, don't eat me. Teeny tiny hippocampus bargibunti, also known as bargibunt's seahorse, or pygmy seahorse, comes from the family Syngnathidae and measures in at a mere one half to one inch in length. They live exclusively on fan corals and are such masters of disguise, hence their lovely hues, that they weren't discovered until a researcher found one in the midst of coral being studied in a lab. Don't worry little guy, we can't see you. Web-footed geckos can thank their strangely translucent, salmon-colored skin for hiding them so well against the reddish sands of the Namib Desert where they live. Other defense mechanisms include a vocabulary of clicks, squeaks, croaks, and other sounds to scare off potential attackers, plus, the old break-off-the-tail trick that all geckos have. But perhaps the strangest thing about this cutie pie reptile is this, they have no eyelids and thus must lick their eyeballs to keep them moist, proving that the animal world is clearly stranger, and even more wonderful, than fiction. <laughs>